Okay, what color was it? Blue. What the? (laughs) (laughs) Hello, everyone. Welcome to Trevor Talks Too Much, the show where I, as you know, bring on a guest and I have them on and we have a conversation and I just see if we can become friends, you know, see if we can't, you know, spark a little friend connection. Uh, I'm your host, Trevor Everts. I am the master baker, uh, which for all of you in the comments saying, telling me to stop saying master baker because it sounds like something else. That's why I say it. That's the joke. Master. Ba- Just g- <laughs> <laughs> mythical soft boy and <laughs> saver of horses, rider of cowboys. That was the line that I was going to use. Anyway, today I had on Brianne Chu, um, who you may know. She's an actress. She stars in... I Know What You Did Last Summer, the series on Amazon Prime, which is a reboot of the earlier films and novels. Uh, She also has a new movie that just came out recently called Unhuman. It's a zombie movie. Um, Blumhouse original, which I'm excited to watch. Um, We talked about all sorts of stuff. We talked about uh, how underrated campy horror movies are because she's in some campy horror productions and we both love them. So we talked about that. We talked about how terrible some people's pickup lines are. Uh, just a little fun internet scroll of some of the worst pickup lines you've ever heard. Uh, and we also talked about the greatest Disney shows of all time, including but not limited to Corey in the House, The Sweet Life of Zack and Cody, Wizards of Waverly Place, and many others. Uh, but we had a great time. So before this, uh, before we started this recording, I really had to pee, but I also like don't like to get up once I've sat down, so I usually don't pee once we start recording. Uh, And I said, I have to piss like a racehorse. And then I was like, wait, I don't even know where that phrase comes from. And it's kind of weird. And so I looked it up. Turns out it started the phrase, the the, the slang started as just piss like a horse. And it doesn't even come from, it's not like anything. Like I thought, oh, maybe it's because like, you know, after a race, the horses really have to pee because they've been holding it in all race or something like that. Or like, I don't know, maybe like the horses don't pee to like make them run faster or something. But it turns out it's just horses just have a, a huge urine stream. Big old bladder. Like a huge, like it's not the bladder. It's like their the urethra or something. Like it's a huge, like it, the, apparently horses urine streams can be up to like a half inch in diameter, which like you think about a half inch, like, you know, that doesn't sound that big, but like imagine a, a stream of urine that's a half inch. That's like a river. And so some dude one day just like saw that and he's like, man, I got to piss like a horse. And then eventually it just became a racehorse. Like some dude, I don't know. I was reading the history of it. I don't know if it was a verifiable article. Uh, I didn't check the sources. Uh, they seem to really care about the phrase, though. That's what really got me. They seem to really, truly care. It was a long, it was a long article for what seemed like the content should have been short. They seem to be pretty invested. I love where terms come from. They can be I passionate. love etymology. It's actually really interesting. I used to have a whole book of idioms and like where they came from. Really? What no, was like your 100. favorite one? I don't know, man. You're putting me on the spot. Yep. Fake. Jamie just lied to I all didn't. of you. <laughs> she just lied to everyone. She said she had a book of idioms and she can't even name one idiom. Don't throw Jamie's stones in glass literal... houses. What? Don't throw stones in glass houses. Why are you saying that? That's an even, idiom. I don't even have a rock. That's an idiom. What does it mean? It means that like, why are you going to be talking crap about somebody when you're basically doing the same thing? Because it's like, if you throw stones in a glass house, like you're an idiot, you're going to break all your walls. I don't get it. Jamie is lying once again. I'm going to put a definition that's going to come up on the screen. lying to everyone. And you know what? I'm just so ker- kerfuzzled right now. Oh, I remembered the story that I, or what I was going to say. Anyway, Zach and Cody, you guys remember that Danimals commercial with them? <gasps> Nobody ever won that. That was a lie. No, that's completely a lie. There's a no lie. way. Nobody ever won the Danimals summer sweepstakes, okay? Nobody ever got to go on that trip. Nobody was drinking Danimals, sending in the codes. That was a lie. But those Danimals commercials with that weird, like, hyper-realistic cartoon monkey, yeah. those were great commercials. And then Zach and Cody in, like, their red shirts, and they're, like, sipping a Danimals. I loved Danimals when I was a kid. I, I think you want to get into the show, Jamie. Uh, yeah, I love animals so much. They're so good. It's like liquid yogurt. Uh, let's get into the show, everyone. Uh, everybody out there listening at home in your car, on a boat, in a train. What are Jamie? What are other modes of transportation? Uh, hang gliding. 
That's not a mode of transportation. <laughs> it it kind of is. That's like an activity. I mean, it is. That's like an activity, though. It's not like, <laughs> oh, I got to go. you get from one place to the other. Okay, yeah, but you're not like, oh, I got to go to Ralph's. Let me hop in my hang glider. Uh, okay, a scooter. <laughs> scooter, that's good. If you're listening on your scooter, um, that's I'm- enough. I think we've covered all our bases. Cool. <laughs> Brianne. Brianne Chu, everyone. Hi, Hi Brianne. <laughs> Hi, thanks for having me. <laughs> uh, for those of you out there that don't know, Brian, you are an actress. Correct. Um, and you've been in all sorts of stuff. Uh, I mainly known, I would say, for the following such as, that was a good sentence. Uh, I Know What You Did Last Summer, the series based on the films that were based on a book. It's a great take on the original well, movies that were based off the book, like you said. And it's not, you know, it's not like, a replica necessarily yeah. we had our, our own creative freedoms and everything and it's it's far more contemporary yeah but um you know it still has the same scary aspects to it um and it's just a it's a fun thriller to watch yeah i think i like all kinds of horror movies but there's something about like campy slashers and stuff like that oh, that so i just good. love so much like the original friday the 13th stuff like that scream all those like mm-hmm. halloween all those old classics, just like campy slashers, you got some big burly dude running around with a machete, just cutting teenagers' heads <laughs> off. That's my favorite. And I know that makes me sound like a psycho, <laughs> but I no, love No, not at all. I love those too. It's their classic and like, um, I don't know, it definitely scratches a certain itch that I have. I get to laugh yeah. and, you know, scream in the same movie. And so I think it's, you know, the perfect package. You know, that's a good night. Hour and 30 minutes. If I can laugh and and scream, and that's a good time. That's a good time for me. I think so. Um, you were also in 47 Meters Down, Uncaged. Yes. And it's, I, it's funny because that's not necessarily meant to be campy, but like I think just the nature of it is. Yeah. And um, it also has that effect, yeah. at least on me. I like maybe because I, I was in it and I know behind the scenes and everything, but like I laugh and like scream all in this watching that movie as well. Yeah. Do you are you like afraid of sharks? I mean, who is it? Okay. Cause I am. Are you big time? Like and I, am. And I know are you, you I know like statistically you shouldn't be, and sharks are great, and I I love sharks for you know what they I don't know. It's weird. Anytime you say like, oh, I'm scared of sharks, there's always going to be like, actually, you're more likely to get struck by lightning than get attacked by a shark. And it's like, yeah, okay. But there's still something scary about like swimming in water. And there's a thing with big teeth that could come and eat you. I don't like that. Absolutely. I, I sometimes, especially when I was younger, I would get scared going into a pool because yeah. I was like, there's a shark. There's, <laughs> there's like complete, there, completely yeah. like illogical yeah but it actually scared the crap out of me and so shooting that movie was fun because you kind of get to just really give in and imagine like your greatest fear coming true yeah and so and then on top of that 90 percent of the movie was all underwater and i learned to scuba dive which is Mm. another you know exactly is another scary hurdle to get over but luckily there were no real sharks involved (laughs) <laughs> imagine if there was yeah i was gonna imagine say they like they had a real shark because they've got like you know they've got like actor bears and horses that are in movies like you know they've got like trained yeah. bears what if they just had like a trained shark for movies like that i, I definitely wouldn't have done it oh god that's like a scary it. thought <laughs> i don't like that she's like no, oh yeah this is ronald shark. <laughs> the shark <laughs> <laughs> and our shark was actually a guy uh, named joe who was a professional scuba diver and he had um there was this huge shark head that we had and inside there were these two like grips for him and he had a fan so he could glide through the water and frontal view very scary yeah but then you see the side of him and you just like (laughs) (laughs) just some dude some dude named joe wearing a big shark head (laughs) it's like oh there's joe (laughs) classic joe so (laughs) yeah that was that experience (laughs) that sounds amazing that like almost takes the fear away like uh like seeing some dude just wearing like a shark head and just like just the head and you just see his like little like legs just swimming around that's great I remember I used to, yeah. I, I would, we'd go to like the lake in the summers as a family. And like, there's just something like about floating in water 
they, it just, it's scary. Mm. Like I was like, I'm, I'm something's going to eat something me. something very eerie. Something's going to eat yeah. me, even though there's no monsters. Even if it's not a shark, but even if it's not a shark, like in my head, when I'm in a body of water, immediately I'm thinking of like, I don't know, a crazy person who's underwater and is going to grab my leg Joe. and like pull me down. <laughs> it's Joe. Joe. <laughs> and, or like, like man eating piranhas or a crazy octopus yeah. or something like that. Like, the ocean is just so unexplored compared to, you know, even space. Thank so you. the thought, exactly. So the thought of just going into the unknown and knowing that I'm not the best swimmer yeah. <laughs> is, is terrifying. You get it. You get it. I, yeah, the ocean oh, freaks yeah. me out. I don't like, I mean, like I'll go to the beach and I can like swim in the ocean fine. But like, I mean, even just the ocean itself. I remember when my mom was in high school, she had a friend who got like sucked out by a riptide. And <gasps> like what you, when that happens, it's like you're just swimming in the water. All of a sudden there's a current and you're a mile away yeah. from the beach and you can't do it. My mom, though, what a hero. She literally like her friend got sucked out by a riptide. My mom saw it happening. She straight up went and her friend like wasn't a great swimmer. My mom swam out into the ocean, grabbed my friend and swam against like the riptide back to shore like with her friend to like save her. What a hero. Yeah, my mom is like freaking That's super awesome. woman. Um, I I wouldn't, I would, you know, hope that I could save like a friend if that happened to them, but I really am not a strong swimmer. So no, I think yeah. if I were to do that, it's over for both of us. Yeah. Well, what you're supposed to do. So I just wouldn't do it. Fun safety tip for those of you out there going to the beach. If that ever happens to you, what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to let the current take you not expend any mm -hmm. of your energy just stay afloat let the current take you out and then you're supposed to swim like to the right or to the left and once you swim out then you can get past the riptide and then you swim back into shore and there won't be like and you'll be able to go back in um if you ever if that ever happens to you which god willing it won't because that's so frightening and I, even just thinking about it it scares me yeah i don't yeah. like it it's so scary mm. but yeah sharks i think have been done a disservice by the media um by films you know by shark week <laughs> by shark week by shark week by jaws by some other third thing they because <laughs> i don't think i don't think if like growing up i don't think if i if i hadn't watched jaws growing up i probably wouldn't be like as afraid yeah. of sharks you know like they're good creatures totally. and there's really not a lot of shark attacks, but you always hear it's like, oh my God, this surfer, soul surfer. That's the other third thing. And that's like a true story, but still it's unlikely. But no, definitely. The media has um, groomed us into thinking that they're these monsters, which, yeah. you know, they're not, but like, I definitely don't want to come face to face with one. Yeah. But then there's things like spiders, tiny little spiders that can get in your home and kill you. Nobody cares about spy. Actually, that's not true. Arachnophobia is a movie. Hate that movie too. <laughs> <laughs> I I hate spiders. I have a big fear of spiders yeah. as well. I have a big fear of um just like creatures. I guess centipedes. Oh, don't even. So that <laughs> actually is no seriously. Like I could cry just because no, you said that. No, I, don't want to <laughs> I have like I have like a huge fear of centipedes because when I was. In high school, so my family and I had just gone on like a two week trip to Indonesia and Bali, which yeah. is, I'm half Indonesian. And so I have family there and stuff. And we had come home and my mom had always told me, she was like, you know, when you're traveling, you shouldn't put your suitcase in your room after because it's dirty, you know, like leave it in the garage or whatever. Yeah. And I never listened to my mom. <laughs> so I put the suitcase in my room. I woke up the next morning and coming out from under my bed was the biggest centipede. I've ever seen and I screamed and I was crying and it was so horrifying and like my mom thought I was being murdered and so my mom and my sisters came into the room and they saw it and I just I didn't know what to do I was just crying and my sister was like oh my, oh my god like you're so annoying like she all she did was pick it pick it up with like a basket and flush it down the toilet oh no absolutely like, not it was nothing nope no, but like, she's so brave. I could never have done it, obviously. <laughs> but it's still like, I can still hear the noise that it made. Like, like as if I was tapping my nails on something, it was like clacking on the floor. No. And I can hear all of its like millions of legs. And <clears throat> it's disgusting. Yeah. I hate that. I, I'm so, like such um, a wuss when it comes to bugs. Like, 
Growing Me up, too. if there was ever a bug in my room, I was like totally like I'm jumping on my bed and I'm grabbing a shoe and I'm just throwing my shoe across the room because there's no chance. Or I'm like, burning the house down. Yeah, I'd like pull the move where like, do you ever like if there's like a bug on the ground, I would like get up and I'd like grab. I'd either put a shoe on or I'd grab a shoe and I'd like go stomp and then immediately run away just in case <laughs> I didn't get it. Just book it and like peek around the corner. Like, did I get him? <laughs> Ugh. Yeah, I no, like I do the exact same thing. Honestly, I, there was a huge spider in my room the other day, and it was like kind of running like in and out from under the bed, and I kept trying to get it, but I couldn't get it. And it was a big spider, and I, I went to my roommate, and I was like, "We have to move. Yeah. There's no other <laughs> solution. Pack it up. We're gone. <laughs> I'm out. Can't do it. Can't do it." Um, you were also, uh, a recently released film. You were in, you starred in Unhuman, zombie movie. Mm -hmm. How was that? Yeah. Well, so speaking of, you know, kind of campy horror, that's definitely in that genre. And I think it does a really lovely job at it. Um, our director was Marcus Dunstan and he's just, he did like the Saw movies and stuff. So yeah. he's so good at creating like you know, tension and scary moments, but yeah. then also just making it like so stylistically pleasant to watch. And um, yeah, so it's, it's, it's a kind of a twisted zombie take on like your typical John Hughes movie and it's all these quintessential high school stereotypes. Yeah. And we go on this field trip and essentially we think that the world has been like, or the country has been like invaded by zombies and there's a huge twist and I don't want to ruin it. Don't but, ruin it. Um, you can, I won't. I'm gonna watch <laughs> but it. You get to see all these. Okay, good. Yeah. I really, I really like how the movie came out because it is. It's one of those movies you laugh, but you jump and like you're on the edge of your seat the whole time. And it's cool because you get to see these characters go on this journey from being that stereotype to really coming into their own. Yeah, I love so, how the trailer does one. that. Though. Like, like I watched the trailer earlier because I was I was mm. like reading up whatever, and the trailer. I love how it like shows like the most likely to die first and that stuff. The most likely, like it just exactly. takes all these horror movie stereotypes, and I love that. I love the return like to the campy horror film because I feel like for a long time there in like recent years, like we got into this very like horror's got to be like gut wrenching and dark, like dark yeah. and it's got to leave you like feeling sick to your stomach like dirty dirty you know? like yeah. whether it's possession or like some freak and now it's like like what what movie freaky with with Catherine Newton and Vince Vaughn where they swap yeah. bodies great movie oh I loved that I love it yeah. I just love camp like I want to be able to laugh I want to have like those scary moments those like uh, those jumpy moments but then I want to be able to laugh because it's like you know at the end of the day I don't want to like there's sometimes when I want to go to bed feeling like sick to my stomach or like I can't sleep without a nightlight but like most of the time when I want to want like I want to be entertained and I want to have a good time and so I love the I return agree. to the campy horror it's great and I think it, you're so right. There was like a period, like in the 90s, it was a lot of campy horror. And then I think the early 2000s and 2010s, it was like, it got real dark. Yeah. And then I think like where we're at in the world right now, like still in a pandemic and, you know, politically, we're like so distraught and torn as a country. I think people will always love horror, but right now I think people are really drawn to the, the campier versions of it because yeah. you're right. Like we don't really want to feel yeah. too bad. We just want to be entertained. Yeah. There's enough stuff that makes me feel sick on a, on a regular basis. Like I on don't need my movies to do it too. I turn on the news and I feel too. sick. Yeah. I don't need my yeah, movies exactly. to do it too. Yeah. The real horror movie is turning on the news. <laughs> That's exactly. the real horror movie. <laughs> Oh, or like man. literally opening my phone and going on a dating app. That's pretty horrifying. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Yeah. I, Ooh, I, that's tough. Men, men, I, I wasn't on dating apps for a long time, but I can't imagine the other end of that. Like I'll just scroll through Twitter and I'll see screenshots. And I'm like, how are there actual people out there saying this kind of stuff? Oh my God. It's really, sh I followed this account on Instagram. I think it's called text from my ex. Yeah. And, it is just, I mean, it, there's gold on there, you know, because you yeah. can laugh at it because it, it's not you. Yeah. But I have gotten some of those like very cringy texts and it's just crazy that anyone would ever think that it would be okay to yeah. say that. 
There's a great Twitter account <laughs> called Incel Pickup Lines, and it is my favorite. Oh, okay, God. I'm sorry. I love it so much. I have to. I have to read one. I have to pull it up because it is so funny. Yeah, and you just read do. it, and it's like there's no way these are real human beings. It, it's not possible. Also, so a lot of the the tweets from this account, they um, there's like these really weird accounts on Twitter that are like. Like how to pick up girls. Like this is the man's guide to success on how to pick up chicks. And this oh, account God. will just tweet like a picture of like a, an objectively attractive woman and be like, you see this girl as you're walking to dinner and you make eye contact. How do you open? And then the replies to those tweets are absurd. Oh, okay. Hold on. Incel pickup <laughs> lines. Okay. This one, he replied to a girl's story on Instagram and he said, you look exactly like my ex though. I'm a boy with a lot of mommy issues. We will be perfect match. Ha 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 ha. How are you saying that and thinking that's going to go anywhere? Like how? <laughs> that's absolutely terrible. Uh, I can't even read oh, these. God. I can't even read these. I've said some pretty messed up things on the show. Read one more. Okay, I, gotta, I gotta find a good one. Jamie, tell us a joke while I find a good one. Um. Oh, okay. Well, I have something back when I was on dating apps. It's not really okay, that good. big a deal, but so it was like, you know, um, Bumble, the chick has to uh, message first if it's a heterosexual type thing going mm -hmm. on. And so there's this guy who's a soccer player. He's like, oh, you're a soccer player. That's really cool. What position do you play? And he just responds back, doggy style. And I was like, oh, so are you receiving? <laughs> Because that was my question back. Because I was like, <laughs> I'm like, who, who opens that way? That was a good comeback. That was a really good comeback. Thank I know you. you're asking like a genuine question and they think that like, if they give you some really creepy, witty response, all of a sudden you're going to get weak in the knees. It's yeah. like, that's not how it works. <laughs> right? Okay. I've got, I've got two. I picked two. Because <clears throat> I don't want to scroll okay. through Twitter the whole time. Um, okay. So this one, the guy said, do you really think I'm ugly? And then the girl replied, no, of course not. And then he said, oh, thank God. So are your breasts big? <laughs> what? <laughs> these are real these people. These aren't even clever. Is, They're not even real. clever. Like... It's like if it were a cheesy pickup line, at least yeah. I could give them the credit of like trying to be witty or something. But like these are just weird. Yeah. Like my my girlfriend now, I think in the first message, because we actually met on Bumble. And I think the first message mm. I ever sent to her had the word poggers in it, which, again, is very <laughs> cringe and not a good move by me. But it's not like weird. OK, this one's this one's like unholy. So. It looks like there was some conversation before, but the girl said, like, what? And then the guy said, like, show me how sexy you are. And then the girl said, gross. And then he said, ha ha, I actually wanted to come across as gross to show you who's the boss. So if you want to find out more and get closer to the core, tell me something sweet and nice. Let's just roll the dice. Why is he rhyming? And then the, <laughs> and then the girl said, bull. And then he said, go to hell, you self-important Actually, your life already must be a hell since you are so full of hate and arrogance. Pity you. Oh my god. These aren't oh real gosh. people. There's I I just can't they, anyway, back to the whole dating app. Like, if that's what's going on, if that's like a normal man, I feel really bad. I don't I have to I don't know. I'm going to give men a little bit of credit and say that I haven't dealt with many that are okay. like that. Good. Um, I know that there are, I have dealt with a few weirdos and creeps and whatnot, but like but the majority isn't that bad. If that's what I was getting, I'd burn my phone. Like <laughs> I wouldn't, <laughs> it'd be done. I, I wouldn't, I would be. I just go back to the Blackberry. For the rest of my life. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. No more smartphones. I'll have more luck with the Blackberry. <laughs> yeah. But we were talking about your movie Unhuman, right? Yes. Yeah, yes. I'm going to watch it. I think I saw earlier. Uh, maybe I'll watch that tonight, you know, because I could go for a movie. Actually, I probably won't watch it tonight because I think my girlfriend would get mad if I watched a movie without her. Oh, okay. Fair enough. I have to watch movies over. Yeah. Do you pretend that you didn't watch it the first time? Uh, yeah, sometimes. So sometimes, <laughs> yeah, so sometimes we're like, oh, we should watch this movie or there's a movie that I really want to watch and I'll just watch it. And then I usually I'm pretty honest. I'll just be like, I'll watch it again if it's like a good movie because I rewatch yeah. movies. Then she never yeah. trusts me. OK, she never trusts me on what a good movie is. <laughs> I remember the amount of like pulling. It was like pulling teeth trying to get her to watch Gladiator with Russell Crowe. Oh, 
Oh, that's classic, though. It's a classic. It's one of my favorite movies and of she, all time. Like, didn't trust you. That's so funny because I wonder if someone else was like, "This is a great movie." If she'd be like, "Oh yeah, cool, I'll check it out." Like I believe you, but like you say it, and she's like, "I don't believe you." Yeah, I don't know why, and it's happened <laughs> so many times. It's like a joke now. I'll say, "Oh, we should watch this movie. I love it. It's a great movie," and she's like, eh, "I don't know if I'll like it," and I'm like. I, I don't know what else to tell you. Just trust me and we'll watch it. And then we watch it and she's like, oh my God, that was such a good movie. I'm so glad we watched it. And I'm like, why do you keep not trusting me then? <laughs> Destiny, just trust me, please. Sorry. A little PSA to my girlfriend. <laughs> she gets mad when I roast her on the show though. She's like, why are you talking crap about me on I the mean, show? I'm like, everything I say is true. <laughs> okay. I would never lie. <laughs> Here, th th now this is big. This is big, everyone. For those of you uh, that are connoisseurs of fine media, um, you'll appreciate this. Your first ever acting role was in Corey in the House. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah, it was. This is I huge like, for me. Okay. I love I Corey like in the House. I was like seven or eight. I mean, I did too. It was like, it was the first, before that, I had just done like print and commercial work. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, I got scouted by my manager, who's still my manager to this day. And, you know, we, I, it was like that, that was what you did at the time when you're that young and you're acting. It's like Disney Channel or Nickelodeon is kind of where you go. And so one of my first auditions was for Corey in the House and I got the job and I screamed at the top of my lungs because I was so excited. I watched it every day. Yeah. It was like that, Hannah Montana, Sweet Life of Zack and Cody. And um, I mean, it was awesome. It was a great experience. And it really showed me that I do love acting. Because yeah. I, was, I, was I was doing commercials and stuff literally just to supplement like my college fund. Yeah. I have a lot of siblings and my parents were like, time to put you to work, you know? Yeah. Um, <laughs> but then I realized I really loved it. Yeah. And it was so fun. It was the silliest goofiest set it was a good first job i think but like it's awesome that now i get to be able to say my first job ever was cory in the house yeah i mean cory in the house that i think that's like an underrated disney channel show i would say it is because you know you have all the people everybody you know when you talk about classic disney shows everybody brings up sweet life everybody brings up hannah montana mm -hmm. everybody brings up that's so raven you know and then you get to like the wizards of waverly mm -hmm. place era not a lot of people are coming in with the cory in the house but i think that it deserves that because it was a great show. Oh, yeah. Great if show. If anyone ever says that's their favorite, like, childhood show, like, props to them. Because it was. It was an underrated show. It was so good. It was so funny. And it was, like, this, like, black family leading this children's show at that time. Like, that's yeah. really, really cool. And, and I don't think that, like, even at the time, I acknowledged how big that was. And yeah. so it was really a good experience, I think. That's awesome. That's awesome. I want to get stoned now and watch it. <laughs> that sounds so great. I did that the other, that I did that so like great. a few months ago with Wizards of Waverly Place. Oh. And it was mind blowing. And also, like, it was so funny to me, but I don't know if it's just because I'm stoned. Yeah. But it was Probably, great. Great content. That sounds great. Maybe that's the way to do it. Because every once in a while, I'll go, I've, I've been really wanting actually to like go rewatch old Disney shows because they're all on Disney Plus, right? Yep. Yes. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. I remember scrolling through Disney Plus and I saw like Sweet Life and I was like, God, I remember like the best year, the best childhood years coming home from school. You know, it's it's 3.30 p.m. And I turn on the Disney Channel and watch Sweet Life on deck in the living room. It was like back when I didn't have to do like eight things to like to like stay focused exactly. or like be entertained. Like nowadays, if I'm like playing video games, I got to have a show up on the side. I got to have a YouTube video on my second monitor. Like if I'm doing so, I, I can't just sit there. Even if I'm watching a movie, like I'm constantly pulling out my phone, like subconsciously, to like Same. look at Twitter. And it's like back in the day, I just get home from school and I just grab like a freaking nutty buddy out of the pantry and a Capri Sun. And I just sit on the couch and just be <laughs> yes. so zoned in. To freaking Wizards of Waverly Place, Sweet Life, all those shows, Corey and the House. And like, it was the greatest thing ever. Like, I just wish I could have that again. I wish. I know the simplicity of it, oh, you know? Man. And like, there wasn't social media back then. You're right. Like, every time I watch something now, it's really, I have to make an effort to put the phone away because, you know, 
I'll be checking my notifications on Instagram or I'll be on TikTok. And I'm like, I'm not even enjoying what I'm watching yeah. right now. And I think our attention spans are like so scattered now, so as opposed to back then where it was like, I found full joy yeah. just watching. Oh, do you remember that Sweet Life of Zack and Cody episode, the Halloween episode? The It was like the haunted hotel room. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Oh my God. That's like the best episode ever with the eyes on the wall. That freaked me out as a kid. (laughs) It truly is a work of art. It is so good. I honestly, I think I might change my, when people ask me what my favorite horror movie is, I'm just going to say it was that episode of Sweet Life, Zack and Cody. Yeah. Because as a kid, it scared me so badly. It was horrifying. I think even to this day, it would probably scare me a little to watch it. We all it thought so Esteban good. died. He got like yes. sucked. He went, I thought he was gone. I was a kid. I was like, that, he's done. Esteban's gone. And I'm like, that is so dark yeah. for a kid show. God, what a great show. Oh, man. I yeah. I, back in the day, it didn't take a lot, I feel like, to entertain. I like When I was a kid, I'd like go outside and like, you know, play with, like pick up worms off the ground. And like that was entertaining to me. Yeah. Now it's like, if I'm not doing eight things, I'm just like, I, I get like, I get anxious. If my brain isn't like fully stimulated by like seven different things, I'm like, oh, I start shaking and freaking out. But what are, what are our thoughts on Sweet Life on Deck? Cause I thought that as far as like, quote unquote, like reboots or evolutions of shows, I thought it was pretty good. I like the idea of Zach and Cody, but on a boat. <laughs> yeah, I thought it was great. Like it didn't hinder me from watching it at all when I was a kid. Um, I loved it I, because like, I guess in my head, the thought of like going away on like a boarding school type situation on a boat, that was so cool. This is like you the know? dream. Like as a kid. And so that's a dream. And so for them to be like doing that, I mean, I was obsessed with it. And also Corey in the House was a spinoff from That's a Raven. Yeah. 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 That's true. I, yeah. um, yeah, I remember watching The Sweet Life on Deck when I was a kid and I was like, I, I would give anything. I would give my left leg to live on a boat and just go. I know. Looks so cool. Oh my God. With the smoothie right? bar. The smoothie bar. Those smoothies look yes, so good. The smoothie bar. Oh my God. <laughs> I would kill for one of those smoothies. My my youngest sister used to be an actress as well. And she did a lot of like um guest spots on Disney shows. And one of them was Sweet Life on Deck. And she played a young version of London Tipton. Oh. And um, so I came to watch the live uh, show that they do um, like every Friday or something and with the live audience and I saw the smoothie machine and it was really disappointing up front because you realize that there's just like it looks like little Orbeez they're just no. full of little Orbeez inside no. there was no actual smoothie yeah. I'm gonna need a minute it was sad yeah I'm gonna need a minute <laughs> I know. can Me we too. all have a moment of silence for the sweet life on deck smoothie machine yeah Okay, thank you. Um, <laughs> wow, my immersion's ruined. Thanks, Brian. God. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm gonna never watch the show again. <laughs> oh man. How so how did you how'd you get into like you said like you started doing commercials? Was it like your parents or was it something that you had expressed interest in? Did you did you grow up in, in California? So I grew up in California. My parents are immigrants from Indonesia. And um, I have a lot of siblings. I have four siblings. And, um, came from like a, like middle, low class yeah. family. So it, you know, there's so many kids. It was like, and my parents, their big thing was that, you know, being here in America, they wanted us to go to college, yeah. all of us to go to college. And so, but to afford that, because college is very expensive yeah. here in America, yeah. you know, they were like, why do, why don't you just start like doing print and commercial and, and they didn't by any means force me to do it. I love doing it. I was a very performative child. Yeah. And I was a dancer growing up. I actually thought I was going to grow up to be a dancer. Um, and then I, yeah, the transition was like pretty smooth for me. I, I feel very lucky that I found, you know, kind of my passion at such a young yeah. age. Um, and then jokes on my parents because I dropped out of college three times. <laughs> Got him. <laughs> yeah. Keep them on their toes, you know? No, I just love hearing like stories about like, like that where you just kind of fell into the thing that you love without even kind of trying to do it, you know? It just sort of happened. And I think like, I mean, the kind of the same thing happened with me here. Like I went to culinary school and I didn't mm. think I was going to be working at like an entertainment wow. in- company or a production company or anything like that. Yeah. But like, I don't know. It's just a cool way, to, you know, to like 
test different things, do, you know, try things out. And eventually, you know, you'll find that thing that you love. And, and I, it's so cool. Cause once you find it, you like, no, you know, if, if you're ever like questioning, like, totally. oh, I don't know if this is really for me or, or, or what's going on, then it's probably not what's for you. But like, once you find it, it just feels so good to know, like, this is like, this is where I thrive. This is where I feel like the happiest this is like my passion and what I love to do. And, and that's especially in acting. It's just like, it's not an easy profession, yeah. you know, I think from the outside, everyone thinks it's pretty glamorous, but it really isn't. Most actors, like all the very famous wealthy actors you see, they're a very small percentage of the actors that you yeah. know, are out there trying to do work. And um, you're just constantly grinding yeah. and it's not easy. You, it's, it's a ton of rejection. Yeah. And um, so it really, I think, you know, pretty quickly if it's what you want to do because either you s keep doing it as, as it may be sometimes or you're out yeah. and that's how you know and I just I've been doing it since I was a kid and I really can't imagine doing anything else yeah that's awesome props to you for growing because yeah. I know ever since like moving to LA and like knowing some people that are either like up and coming actors or people that want to be actors like it really is it's a it's a grind and you got to get out there and you got to put yourself yeah. out there and you have to be able to deal with rejection on a very regular basis because you're not going to get every single thing that you audition for you're not going to get every single part and you're going to get maybe one percent yeah and, <laughs> and you just got to keep going for. and you just got to keep going yeah but um yeah props to you for for sticking to it i i genuinely Thank i you. cannot wait to go i i I don't know what it is, but when I was looking, Jamie writes me these fun little fact sheets about all the guests that I have on mm -hmm. the show. And I was reading through it earlier today and I was literally looking at both Unhuman and I Know What You Did Last Summer. And I was like, I just want to watch these so bad. No, but um, I, I've, I've been lucky to get to be a part of like some really fun projects. Yeah. And I really, I loved doing I Know What You Did Last Summer and Unhuman. And yeah, like you said, they're both like very entertaining in that campy horror way. And so if that's kind of, your genre, I think you'll be very um, pleasantly surprised. Yeah. I also just love like knowing people in movies. Like, I don't know what it is. There's something nice about like, like having a friend or something that you know is in a movie. Like watching it just makes it more fun. You're like, oh my God. Totally. I just talked to that person. I love watching it. Exactly. And I love watching it with my friends yeah. that are actors, like their, their projects. Cause then I, I can ask the questions yeah. and like what happened behind the scenes here yeah. and or how'd they do that stunt? And yeah, I like to get all the tea. Yeah. Do you think anybody ever does that like with my podcast? I guess I would know firsthand. So what's going on behind the scenes of the podcast? Like, well, it's just mostly a lot of me yelling. <laughs> just screaming. <laughs> a lot of screaming into he the void. He greets you with a very thick country accent yeah, when you yeah. get on. I really try and, and <laughs> put people off as soon as they get in. <laughs> really yeah. try and make it Imagine weird. Imagine if I had just hung up on yeah. you. <laughs> like, I, no, like, you get you in. greeted me and I was like, I'm not doing not this. For me. <laughs> not for me. I'm done. Nope. I'd rather spend my afternoon doing something else. <laughs> uh, you're Indonesian. That's so cool. I thought that you might be Indonesian. Yeah. Really? It was because of your last name. I was like, I, that, sound, that sounds like an Indonesian last name. Yeah, I'm half Indonesian, half Chinese, actually. Nice. That's freaking sick. What's your yeah, favorite? Feel... Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, no, no. I, but I do. I just feel closer to my Indonesian side because I grew up hearing my parents speak Indonesian yeah. and they grew up there. And that was like the food I ate. Yeah. And, yeah. That's literally what I was going to ask. I was going to ask, do you have like a favorite Indonesian food or like street food? Uh, I love mie goreng, which is, um, it's just like a, a fried noodle. Yeah. Yeah. Which oh, it's, it's the best. It's so, so good. good. And even the packaged kind yeah. is like, I have like it in my pantry now. I eat it whenever yeah. I just need like a little comfort food. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, beef, beef rendang yeah. is like, um, a, a beef stew. And I mean, the food is all, it's so good. It's just flavorful. You it know, is. it's like. It's so funny because my parents, like growing up, they would take us to hometown buffet. Yeah. And <laughs> me and all my siblings, and we would have to also pretend that we were like 12 yeah. because then you get the discount. Yeah. So but I was 16, still pretending I was 12. Yeah. But it's so funny that they even took us there because my parents are very specific. Like Indonesian food is very well seasoned, it's spicy. Yeah. And like they took us to hometown buffet, which had the blandest food. Yeah you could ever imagine. <laughs> but they were always salting everything. And I'm like, yeah. why do we go here? Yeah. Like every weekend? I don't understand. I guess it was like 
their way of like having the American experience yeah. of their kids is take them to home bu- town buffet. Yeah. I had the same experience, but at the Sizzler. I would always, you know, pretend oh, that I was young. Sizzler. Yeah. Oh, 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 don't get me started on the Sizzler. I got myself started on the Sizzler. <laughs> I love the Sizzler. Oh man, the Malibu chicken at the Sizzler, crazy. I think, didn't Sizzler like go bankrupt? I don't know. I haven't been to a Sizzler in so long. Oh, I think I've so maybe good. been once or twice there, when I was younger. There's like a couple still around, but yeah. like my childhood Sizzler got turned into an orthodontist. How, That's a great location for an orthodontist. Just really weird. <laughs> like, you know. My dad. What a weird <laughs> switch up. My dad and I, we used to, my mom, my mom is like, she doesn't hate the Sizzler, but she's like, there's so much better food. And I agree there is, but my dad and I love the Sizzler. And like, after my brother had moved away to college when it was just like my mom, my dad and I, the amount of times that my dad and I would be like, can we go to the Sizzler tonight? And my mom would be like, no, can we just go somewhere good or get no. something good to eat? And my dad and I were like, Malibu chicken at the Sizzler. Oh it's Sizzler God. time. Oh, it's so great. You're so easy to please. Yeah. Just take him to Sizzler. Dude, if you take me to Sizzler, I, I'd just be so happy. You go at the end and you just get a fat bowl of ice cream from the soft serve yep. machine. It, it's just like the soft serve ever, but it's so good. Mm. <laughs> I have a game I like to play called Rapid Fire Favorites. So I'm just going to say something random, a category of things like professional basketball team or something like that. And you got to give me your favorite as quick as you can. And then based on your answer, I'm going to judge you based on how I feel about it personally. Um, there's no right answers. Don't ask me what my favorite basketball team is though. Cause I don't watch basketball. I won't. Uh, that was, that was just an example okay. <laughs> because it wasn't one of okay, the great. ones on the list. So I'm going to give you three. Great. Jamie wrote these, so if they're bad, blame okay. her. <laughs> okay. All right, number one, are you ready? Yeah. Extreme sport. BMX. BMX. That's a good answer. That came out. Of- I think that's actually really cool. It is cool, because you got these like yeah. tall, skinny dudes on these tiny little bikes, and they do crazy tricks on them. Great I answer. Used to- they came to my school yeah? when I was... Um- when I was in elementary school, they set up a whole like ramp thing on our like playground on the blacktop. And they just like literally went flying in the air on their bikes. And like you said, they're these yeah. really tall guys and like the bikes look really small yeah. compared to them. And it's just insane the way they contort their bodies in the air. It's crazy. I like, are you kidding me? It's crazy. It's, it's crazy. Insane. I remember when I got, I got a BMX bike when I was a kid. Cause that was the cool thing for kids to do was to have BMX bikes with the pegs on them, you know, so you could do fun stuff. And <clears throat> then it got stolen. I left like somebody left the garage open and my bike got stolen. And I don't think I ever got another bike after that. Like it was, I love that bike. And then it was gone. And I like, I'm now so I'm so sorry, but I stole your BMX bike. What the fuck? What did you just say to me? <laughs> I was the one who stole your BMX bike. Okay, what color was it? Blue. What the? F- <laughs> 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 you son of a biscuit. <laughs> you drove to Idaho and stole my bike out of my garage? <laughs> I'm... Honestly, though, that was the easiest thing to guess because, yeah. like, as a young boy, your bike's gonna be—it's a good shot, you know. It's, it's not gonna a, be purple or green. It's gonna be. It blue. was like blue or black were the two options. So that's crazy. <laughs> no, it was uh, it was a cool shade of blue. Anyway, we're gonna go on to the next one. I don't want to talk about my stolen bike anymore. Okay. It's making me sad. Um, number two, <laughs> Jolly Rancher flavor. Watermelon. Whoa. Okay. No, that's no, correct. No, yeah. no, that's <laughs> that is correct. <laughs> that's like second or third correct. Okay, blue raspberry no. is obviously number one. That's number two for me. What? Water- yeah, watermelon is supreme. Yeah, My mom's I favorite agree. was watermelon. That was um. And I that's why it's the best. Well, your mom saved someone in the ocean. Yeah, that's true. My mom is a very smart woman, and she's very talented, so she's probably right. But I just love blue because blue raspberry is not even a real thing. You know, there's no blue raspberries. True. It's just blue flavored. I love blue flavored things. Um, I, I respect that. I respect that. I would say for me, it's like okay. blue raspberry, watermelon, then grape, then green apple, then cherry. Cherry yeah, sucks. Yeah, cherry. Can terrible. we all agree on that? Not, it tastes like cough medicine. <laughs> it's terrible. 
terrible. If you like yeah. Cherry Jolly Ranchers, I hate you. You're a psychopath. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. The final rap. Wow, this one's tough, Jamie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jamie's oh, uh, <laughs> Jamie's throwing you a curveball on this one. Okay. <laughs> Number three. Are you ready? Yeah. Plant. Um, <sighs> like a. <laughs> Um, like a I green don't know. one. What are those? Yeah, the, the green one. That's my favorite one. Um, what are those plants that like everyone in LA? I swear has one, and they're really hard to keep alive. Or at least they are for me. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, monstera. Yeah. I like those. I like the leaves. They're the big leaves, and they're really beautiful. But yeah. I can't keep a plant alive to save. Oh, my life, so. no, neither can I. Those are great plants. I agree. My girlfriend is like a, she's got like one of those green thumb people. She's a huge plant person. Mm-hmm. Um, so she's just mm-hmm. got a billion plants. I, she actually gave me a plant for my birthday uh, <laughs> one year and then <laughs> it died because I just like. Oh, shocker. Yeah, I know. Shocker, right? <laughs> no, I'm like so bad with object permanence. Like if something sits in one spot for too long, I don't see it anymore. Like my yeah. brain just doesn't mm-hmm. see it. So I put this plant like up on my desk. It was really pretty. It was next to the window in the sun. And then after like three days of it being there, I forgot. I, I just didn't, I didn't know I had a plant um, and it died. So Brianne, final question here for you. Um, Cause the whole point of this mm. show in an ideal world, we, uh, so we would have had a nice conversation, which I think we did. And hopefully by the end mm-hmm. of it, we would become friends. So can we, can we be friends? Dude, you're my buddy now. Yes! Freak yeah! We're buddies! We're buddies! Don't ever talk to me or call me, but I will call you, I will tell people you're my buddy. Okay. okay. <laughs> that, no, I that's never want to see you again, <laughs> okay. but you're my buddy. I can live with that. <laughs> I can live with that. As long as I have the flex, you know? Like, if I get the follow back on Instagram, then I'm like, oh yeah, you guys see that new movie, Unhuman? Like, yeah, that's my buddy. That's my buddy. That's my buddy. Please yeah. don't ask me to reach out to her, though. Please. <laughs> yeah, she blocked me, actually. She will respond. <laughs> um, thank you so much for coming on the show. This is such a great time. Thanks for having me. Yeah, yeah. thank you. I had such an awesome time. Please tell people, I know we talked about all the stuff that you're doing, but tell anybody anything you want them to know about you, where they can find you, what you're doing. Um, I'm, I'm, I have Unhuman that's out right now on digital platforms. Um like all digital platforms, I think. Mm-hmm. And then I know what you did last summer is available to watch on Amazon prime. And I have a movie called the cow with Winona Ryder coming out sometime this year. I don't know exactly when, and a show called high school on freebie that'll come out in October. Sweet. All yeah. sorts of stuff coming out. Really cool. Busy girl. You got, you, you got stuff in the works. Well, that is amazing. Thank you so much for coming on the show again. Thank you. Everybody, that was Brianne Chu. Um, what an amazing guest. She was so nice. Such a sweetheart. Had a great time. Um, please go check out her her series. I know what you did last summer on Amazon Prime. If you don't have Amazon Prime at this point, I don't know what. I mean, pff, feels like everybody does these days. So go check it out. Uh, and also go check out her new movie, Unhuman. It's on like a bunch of different streaming platforms. Um, it's all over the place. Anywhere you can stream movies, it's probably there. Um, so if you like campy, horror, slasher, zombie stuff, Please go check it out. She's amazing. Um, Jamie, how do you think that went? I think that went really well. I think she was very like, I don't think she knew what to expect. No especially clue. Because a lot of like actresses and actors and stuff, it's like they're going on these press junkets and they're doing these things and stuff, but it's like they're expecting, oh, I was just going to hear the same five questions I always hear on everything. But yeah. You just came out of the gates with a country accent and just... Yeah. Well, that's the thing about this show is that unlike other interview shows, I'm unhinged. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that's, you know, fun for a lot of the guests. Probably not fun for others, but, you know, that's their problem, not mine. (laughs) She was sweet. Very cool. Uh, And I also, like, because I've loved... I thought 47 Meters Down Uncaged. Like, I actually liked that movie. I was like, it's campy. I mean, she even said it wasn't meant to be campy, but... It was campy and I yeah. enjoyed it. Yeah. That's all you got to say? I thought I said a good amount. I don't really talk that much on this show. Well, I'd like to give you the opportunity to talk more if you want to. I feel like I'm going to take that bait and then you're going to interrupt me. <laughs> no, that wasn't bait. <laughs> Why do you just assume I'm a terrible person? That wasn't bait. I genuinely was like wanting to see if you had anything else to say. But if you don't, then I'll freaking take it to the outro. Thanks for freaking listening, everyone. Jamie's got me all angry now. No, no, just, just goose fraba. What the f- did you just say? You've never heard of that? 
goose. Oh, was that in your book of idioms? What no, is that's goose fraba? Goose fraba. It's like calm down, chill. What, is, what language is that? It's like a. It's like a. It's a soothing sound Eskimo mothers would whisper in order to soothe their young. But it's also a word used in the film Anger Management with Jack Nicholson and Adam Sandler. I shouldn't have asked if Jamie had anything else to say. And so there I we go. I shouldn't have asked. <laughs> and I... I shouldn't have teed her up for more. <laughs> I quit. No, Jamie, I'm, <laughs> I'm kidding. Sorry, I'm kidding. So <laughs> um, goose fraba. Goose fraba. Am I saying that right? Goose fraba. Goose fraba. Wow, that is calming. It's not. Everyone, you might be noticing the uh, color of the shirt that I'm wearing is orange, and that would be an astute observation by you. And not only that, but it does have T-Rexes on it. In the likeness of my boss's Rhett and Link. So this one over here, I got to pull because the mic stands in the way, so I'm going to pull it to the side. This one's Rhett because he has a beard, and then this one's Link because he has a glasses. And I think that the Rhett one, is it's taller. Rhett's taller, um, as you all know, classic GMM lore. Uh, but it's a cool shirt. It's freaking orange. It pops. It's bright. I like it. Honestly, I don't even think this is my shirt, but I might just steal it. Um, but if you like T-Rexes and you like Rhett and Link, then <laughs> oh, this is the shirt for you. So go check it out, mythical.com. Thanks for listening, everyone, to Trevor Talks Too Much. Uh, we got new episodes coming out every Tuesday, wherever you get your podcasts. We got the video version coming out the following Monday over on the YouTube.com slash Trevor Talks Too Much. Uh, leave a review, leave a comment, let me know. Don't tell me to stop saying Master Baker because I'm not going to do it. I'm going to keep saying it, so I don't care. Uh, but if you have something else to say, then say that. Um, and yeah, make sure to go check out Mythical Pods on TikTok. We've got clips from literally, there's like 30 podcasts now. Not actually 30, but there's a lot of podcasts. Everybody's doing something fun. We got Ear Biscuits, BFBA, Hot Dog, uh, b- a new podcast, Link and His Dad, Dispatchers from Myrtle Beach. We've got clips from literally everything going up there, the funniest moments. So if you want to just go check out some really hilarious stuff going on uh, over on the Mythical Pods, please go check that out. There's some really funny clips from every show, from everyone. Get a little taste of every podcast over there. Um, So yeah, go check that out and have a great week. Have a great day. Have a great month. I don't know. Maybe you're never going to listen again. Have a great life. (laughs) I don't know. Uh, But yeah, enjoy yourself. Pleasure. I almost just said pleasure yourself. Okay, and we... Master Baker, Trevor, have a great day.